goes down at 2 a.m. Well, it depends on what city you're in, first of all, because if you're in LA at 2 a.m., you might be headed home. <laughs> but if you're in Miami, if you're in New York, even in LA, 2 a.m., it's a risky time. I see, uh, I actually I have a residency every week, so I get to see a lot of 2 a.m., all the way from just drunk people, tired people, people at the end of the night, like, finding who they met earlier in the night and securing the bag <laughs> for all intents and purposes. You know, figuring that out, phone calls being made. Uh, for me as a DJ at 2 a.m., I'm probably packing up, trying to figure out where all my stuff is, make sure that it still exists <laughs> where it was, where, where I left it. And um, at least in LA anyways. But soon it'll be 4 a.m. in LA. Then 2 a.m. will be a whole other story. But yeah, definitely just people talking to you, people hitting on you, people, oh man, last week it was crazy. The end of my gig, this guy, I mean, people are dancing their hearts and souls out, which is my favorite. It's the reason why I even DJ in the first place. This dude, there's in this club, there's these metal tall poles. This dude is so lit and happy that he climbs the pole. <laughs> like, and everybody in the club is like, what is happening? And here comes security rushing in like, get down from there. But he's like, having a great time on this pole. I mean, you see crazy stuff like that all the time. You walk around the corner and you're like, um, y'all should go home. Like, do you have a home? Because if you have a home, you should do that at your house. That, you know we can see, right? Are you gonna be proud of this? <laughs> You know. At 2 a.m., I'm super, so I, I figured out strategically how to neutralize the situation of guys being outlandish. So what you do, especially at 2 a.m., is a guy walks up to you, he's about to start talking to you, and you think you can have a feeling discernment about the fact that he's about to say some crazy, wow, whatever. And they're like, hi, my name's it. I'm like, hi. You know, da 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 So now you're like killing them with kindness. They're a little confused by it, okay? And then what you do is you walk away pretty quickly. Like, da 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 did you have a good time? And they're like, yeah, I had a great time. That's dope. That's really dope. I'm really happy to hear that. And you touch their shoulder and you squeeze it. Not a rub, just a squeeze. It's almost like a parent. <laughs> you don't know what to do. And the guy is usually just standing there like, well, she wasn't me. I still don't have her number though. And now she's gone, I don't know how this happened. <laughs> uh, my first DJ experience was at a place called Circle Bar. And at Circle Bar, there was about five people. My homegirl, it was a Wednesday, and I was, I was terrified. I wanted to get out into the world to DJ, but I was like, I just want to practice in a place with real equipment. So I'm gonna, I was stressed out. I was like, I'm gonna get this set together. It's gonna be great. And I got there and I kept those four people dancing all night. But it was very, uh, that was my first DJ gig. She's like, okay. She's like, you did great. Everybody loved it. I was stressed. But those four people, I was like, don't stop. Oh no, they stopped dancing. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, was that smooth? It was. Okay, okay, we made it. Like, <laughs> that was my first DJ gig. Uh, <laughs> man, y'all really, this is like, this is like, I was not expecting these questions, I have to admit. Uh, the worst late night text I've ever gotten from a guy, can we work it out? <laughs> nah, man, this is over. What are you talking about, can we work it out? You can go work out at the gym. That's what you can go do. Probably BET experience to be honest. I always have a mic at all of my gigs, but I feel like BDT experience was the most interesting because it was thousands of people and keeping them engaged and also calling people up on stage. I, I emceed an entire concert. It was like Beyonce's artist and it was Jack, what's his name now, Jacquees? Now he's like legit, but at the time I was calling him Jack Cases. And this young, this young lady was like, that's not his name! <laughs> I was like, oh, how long was that? She was like, 
his name is Jacquees and he's sexy. I will never, ever forget this moment because I was like, my bad. His name is Jacquees. He walked up to the stage. And uh, so that was probably the most interesting. I've, I've done a BET experience for three years now, actually. And it's just a lot of, a lot of energy, a lot of people, a lot of interaction, and a lot of pressure to make sure that people stay up and stay on. Is it hard being in a relationship as a DJ? You gotta be with a very secure person to be with a DJ because a DJ's entire job is to not specifically just pay attention to you. Your job is to pay attention to everybody and to be nice and kind to everybody and to care about the energy of an entire room. To be in a relationship with a DJ, you have to understand that the dynamic when the DJ is out, is it's not about you at all. You're almost like there to be a part of the experience. If you wanna date a DJ, join in. Don't try and sit on the sidelines. What do you need? Yo, that was dope. Like be the number one fan. I think that's anything entertainment wise. It doesn't have to be hard. If you wanna be in it, be in it. But don't sit on the sidelines and be mad because you're not in it. So we had Skrillex and 110, which I call the turn up 10. I think it's called Safari. So I'm over there going ham, love Skrillex at the time. But at the same time, we look at the, the itinerary and outcasts are performing. And we're like, oh no. And then at the same time, Nas is performing. I don't know why they did this. It's like they it's like they just didn't like us or something. But either way, so we're running across the field. And you know, people like Coachella are lit. So you're just like, you kind of feel like you're like, get out of my way. <laughs> we gotta go running across. We see um outcast for some time and then we walk over to Nas. You know, at this point, you've been drinking all day, you've been out in the hot sun, and Lauren Hill comes on the stage. She was like, God, it was amazing. It was the best performance ever. But it's, I mean, I guess the craziness was the happiness that I felt on the inside watching all of these performances back to back. It was like a whirlwind of euphoria and just love that you can't explain.